morning. Amen. Let's lift them up and let's make this confession together. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The incorruptible seed. The I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Praise God, I'll never be the same. Father God, we want to praise you this morning, Lord. We want to thank you so much for the Word of God. We want to thank you, Lord God, for the changes in our life, Lord God, that your Word has brought. We thank you so much, Lord God, for your long-suffering, Lord, and your patience with us. Lord God, we're thankful, Lord God, that you look way beyond our faults. Lord, you see our need. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you continue to minister to us, Lord God. You continue to, to change us, Lord God. You continue to love us, Lord God, in spite of ourselves. Father, we thank you for never giving up on us. We thank you, Lord God, for the awesome church family, Lord God, that you've, that you've brought us into and to learn and to grow. And Lord God, to do wonderful things in your name. Father God, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord God, that you would bless our visitors this morning, Lord God. And Lord God, just touch their lives, Lord, and bless them in peace and prosperity. Father, we thank you for your anointed word. We thank you, Lord God, just to, just to anoint our ears to hear it, Lord God, and to, to anoint our hearts to receive it, Father God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, in the wonderful name of Jesus and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to look to the book of Ephesians this morning. <coughs> the fifth chapter, verse 11, where the Apostle Paul writes, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen. You know, we are on a mission from God. Amen. We have something to do. God has predestined us to walk in good works. Good works that He planned beforehand that we should walk in. And since we were children, you know, we were all taught to believe that Halloween was a time of corn stalks and jack-o'-lanterns and bobbing for apples and dressing up as ghosts and witches and devils and going from door to door yelling, Trick or treat! And this tradition has been handed down from parent to child in this country from generation to generation without question, without any research on the part of Christian parents to find out what kind of a holiday that they were actually allowing their children to participate in. So this morning, I'd like to give you some facts about the origin of Halloween and the practices that go along with it. And then you, for yourself, can determine whether or not if this is in fact a holiday that a Christian should participate in and whether or not if it's a belief or tradition that a Christian parent should be or should not be handing down to their children. How many wants to grow in God? First of all, did you know that there truly are witches? That right now sitting among us this morning, there are those in here this morning that have been delivered from the life of being a witch. And I don't care if they're black witches, white witches, pink witches, green witches. A witch is a witch. It's a pagan. Alright? Did you know that Halloween is a day that witches celebrate above all other days? Witches have eight major festivals that they celebrate throughout the year with the winter equinox or Halloween being their very favorite. I'm telling you the truth this morning. The spring equinox that announces summer is celebrated every year on April the 30th, which was the day in 1966 that Anton Zandor LeVay organized the first church of Satan right here in America. Alright? 
So witchcraft is not child's play. But in fact, the Bible says that it is an abomination in the eyes of God. God said in Deuteronomy 18 and 10, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their sons or their daughters in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, who interprets omens or engages in witchcraft, or a person who admits to being a medium or consults the dead. In fact, in Exodus 22 and 18, it says, You shall not allow a witch to live. Aren't you glad this morning for the grace of God? Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ went to the cross and spilled out His, shed His blood? Amen. That no matter what kind of a lifestyle that we were in formerly, amen, that He, he, uh, he bled and died, that we could be set free. Amen. That we could go free. Praise God. From the year 1575 to the mid-1700s, many, many people were burned at the stake, either for their real involvement or even their suspected involvement in witchcraft. Yet today we've seen the acceptability of witchcraft in our society largely because of the conditioning that's been going on with our kids. We've not questioned it, we've just handed it down year after year. The Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and then when they get older they will not depart. You know, and that, you know, that kind of works both ways. If we train up our children wrong, it's going to, it's harder to get, you know, get them uh, shook free from, you know, former ways of thinking. Many of us have found that out. You know, uh, even, uh, cartoons now for so long. I mean, you know, a lot of parents use Saturday morning TV for babysitters, you know, for to just to turn their kids loose watching cartoons. But did you know, in fact, that 90% of all cartoons are laced with witchcraft? And that survey was not taken by a, a Christian organization. Our schools promote witchcraft through assigned reading materials such as the Harry Potter series and our so-called Supreme Justices have endorsed this by banning the Bible from our schools. You see what's going on? Scores of movies today such as Lord of the Rings and many others have, have made sorcery and witchcraft seem like fantasy when in fact it's very real and it's at work right now in our cities and towns today. Even in our local community. At one time, the pagan community here in Bloomington, Indiana boasted of over 3,000 members. Even the Internal Revenue Service of the United States has given tax-exempt status to the Church of Wicca. Which means your donation to witchcraft is considered to be just as tax-deductible as if you were donating to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All in the name of freedom. I think when our forefathers came to America, the whole idea was that they could come here, that we could be worshiping the one true living God. Not many gods, but the one true living God. That's why they came. Not to practice freedom, to worship all kinds of gods. Somebody said, well, I really don't understand the difference between a Wiccan, or, a, or which is a pagan, or being a Satanist. Now keep in mind, we all know that there is but one true living God. But the answer, or the bottom line to this is, Wiccans or pagans worship many gods. Mother Earth, Father Sky, and so forth. Uh, they worship the trees, and they worship the owls, and, and uh, they worship a lot of them. stuff. Aren't you glad that you worship the one that made the trees and the owls? You know, you can look in... Uh, uh, as we look in Romans 1, 22 and 25, it says, Although they claimed to be wise, they became as fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity uh, for the degrading of their bodies with one another, and they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than worship and serve the Creator. Are you with me this morning? You know, we can look to 